actually. Sir, are you not going to take questions from the floor? Okay. 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 One thing about that builder meeting is that one of the attendees uh, named David Rockefeller, and when I heard you talking earlier about this global financial crisis that everyone's involved in, and, it's, and just like Stephen Harper said, that possibly this is going to be as bad or worse than the Great Depression in 1929, and not many of us have actually lived in those times, so we don't know what we're actually facing, but it could be pretty bad. And one of the members of the Bilderberg meeting stated in the Bilderberg meeting that uh, we are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. And these, th this is someone who attended the same meetings as you and no one really knows about it. In fact, actually, most of the last four out of five prime ministers we've had attended these meetings too. Stephen Harper, John Kutchane, and so on and so on. And I spoke to John Turner, a former prime minister as well, who didn't attend, and I asked him what he thought of it, and he said very specifically that it's basically a group of businessmen who get together behind closed doors and sell out Canadian sovereignty. He said he didn't like them at all, and he was very skeptic. Well, I don't, I don't think they like it may well be. At the meeting that I went to, um, I can't remember if David Rockefeller was there, there was no question of Canadian sovereignty. But what there was was a, a group of people. This was the year that the Wall Street Journal called Canada, um, essentially a banana republic, said that we were a third world country and we were going down. And I've got to tell you that my first couple of years as finance minister, I did nothing to go around the world basically saying that Canada was going to turn it around. We did. We did it. Within four years, we had the best balance sheet of any country in the world. So, so what, is your, what is your opinion about this? It was really good. It was really, really good stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if uh, the system did, did he come over and yeah, uh, he, he told me to like because I don't know what it was. He, he, he just said that I could ask no more questions. Yeah, I, again, that's what his chief of staff told me. Yeah, that's, that's that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah I think it was felt there was a little bit of an attack on him, to be honest. Yeah, uh, and so he said like if he's going to ask me more questions, that he would just have this more leave. Okay, if you're an RCMP officer, could you care to explain why Canadian tax dollars are going to protect this guy instead of putting him behind bars? He's conspiring with international bankers in secret who openly talk about world domination via major world crises, on top of participating in the largest theft ever committed in our country's history. And when confronted about all of this, he acts like a child and has his chief of staff remove my microphone. Is this any way for a Prime Minister of Canada to act? Surely this is newsworthy. Good thing CTV was there to catch the footage. University of Waterloo, an unusual send-off. While most students kick off reading week with a party, a large crowd gathered to get a chance to talk with former Prime Minister Paul Martin. CTV's Nicole Lampa is here with this story. Nicole, what did they discuss? Kyle, given that Martin was a former finance minister, the economy was the key discussion. Every country is focusing on what can they do in order to stimulate their, their national economies. A worldwide problem is being felt by these students. What can we as the West? Matthew Castle asks a former Prime Minister and Finance Minister how to survive the economic downturn, not just as a student, but also as a future leader. As a young person, I'm going to be inheriting this economy. I'm going to be inheriting the budget deficit that Stephen Harper is now racking up. Um, and I think it's important for me to be informed so that I can make good choices and make good decisions. When you have someone that has done it in the past and affected change, you know, be it whether you agreed with the way he did it or not, uh, it really inspires you to do something. Others feel the same way. It's just interesting to hear um, someone of this caliber speak on these kinds of issues. He can tell us a lot about uh, about what's going on. He has a ton of pers perspective. He was a fantastic politician. In my experience is that you can't judge these crises, uh, and they are normally worse, which is why you've got to keep your, as a country, keep your balance sheet in surplus, and you've got to make sure you have the room to maneuver. The economy wasn't the only topic. Martin also talked about Canada's treatment of Aboriginals, our role in Africa and Afghanistan. For Matthew, 
These are issues he doesn't mind tackling. I think when times are tough, that's when you're most needed. And if I would have something to contribute, I'd be more than happy to do it. Now the talk was put on by UW's Federation of Students and a Canadian youth group. This is one of the most disgraceful pieces of journalism I've probably ever seen. Nicole Lampa refused to talk to me on camera, and later after watching the program she put together, I asked her why she didn't at least give the name of my youth group who arranged the whole event in the first place. She told me she was under the impression that my youth group's name was A Canadian Youth Group, and then quickly hung up the phone. In fact, the most coverage that my cause had received from the whole event was published in the local Waterloo paper called The Record, where it was written that, and of course there was that one passionately idealistic student who grilled Martin relentlessly until the microphone practically had to be wrestled from his hands. By the way, I'm not a student at the University of Waterloo. I can't afford it. But again, poor journalism. So here we have the guy who writes the laws, and one of the guys who abuses the laws, which is bankrupting the entire country. Getting together in his $66 million private resort, in secret, along with other bankers who admit major crises are used to form a one-world government, ruled by bankers and elitists. You see, Paul Martin doesn't care if he helps bankrupt the people of Canada, because he's already made his millions from the guy who practically made him Prime Minister. But instead of exposing this, these two news agencies did the opposite and made Paul Martin look more like a saint. This is the opposite of information. Misinformation. So now do you see why the owners of the media attend these secret meetings as well? They don't want to expose the truth, because if they did, they would expose themselves. Take this copy of Reader's Digest. The Canadians You Trust. Let's check out who made the list. Stephen Harper, number 8. Michael J. Fox is number 5. Wayne Gretzky, number 12. Queen of England is number 2. She's not even Canadian. But I guess simple facts don't matter when you're a major publishing company. Number 1 was David Suzuki, Mr. If You Can't Beat Walmart, Join Them. Bob Ray is number 29. Shania Twain, 30. Don Cherry is number 14. What's going on here? How is this list even put together? If you read the fine print, it states, To conduct our trust poll, we commissioned an independent research firm, Harris DeSima, to survey a representative sample of nearly 1,200 English-speaking Canadian adults. Respondents were presented with a list containing the names and photographs of a hundred prominent Canadians and asked to rate each according to trustworthiness. They were then asked to select which personality they trusted the most, giving us our list of the 50 most trusted Canadians. Wow! What an informative study! That's just a loophole to get away with publishing a magazine titled The Canadians You Trust and then putting Stephen Harper and other corrupt politicians on the list. Because what they should have called the magazine was Canadians Nearly 1200 People Trust from a pre-selected media biased list of figures used only to spread propaganda. I mean, who has the power to tell you who to trust, other than yourself? Well, apparently Reader's Digest. But wait a minute, I thought CNN was most trusted. Hmm, maybe that was based on another elaborate trust poll, where CNN wasn't on the list. Here's a quick word fact. The literal translation for the word entertainment is... Diversion! Ah, it all makes perfect sense now. Because people are more worried about how Jen still can't get it together, Inch by inch, these global elitists are getting closer to their goal of world domination. Thanks, Rick. You know, I always had a feeling you would be involved in the destruction of the world. The media is doing such a great job at convincing everyone that politics in Canada is as simple as red versus blue. 
when in reality, as we've seen behind closed doors, they all belong to the same clubs, all serving